Welcome back in our last chapter today, Making of Streets of Bordeaux. And because it's a post-production day, then we will make a short revision, viewing some images, and we'll talk about the use techniques and the basic workflow we have just presented in the previous sections. And we have here in our workflow some filters and some color corrections in the first place because uh, that's the base where we will start in most cases. So we have the contrast we need to correct, we have some exposure control and also some color mix. So don't be afraid to mix cold and warm colors because it's giving a nice tension on images and this may attract your viewers. And it's very important because the composition is the key and I'm not just talking about composition of elements on your images but also the color balance because when you go to a CG forum for, for example and you have a lot of thumbnails on the forum then you will choose this treat with the most interesting thumbnails, right? So always try to look on your images from a far distance and you can uh, be more accurate and you know just judge better your image if the composition is okay or um, the color balance and sometimes it's good to have a nice balanced color in one tone but sometimes also a strong contrast may bring something else to the image so there are no strict rules and always try to break it because you may choose uh, to use your channels in a very different way than usual. For example, you can choose ZDEV channel just to select some areas and change the colors in the front and in the back of the image. And you can choose, for, for instance, the refraction channel to select the reflections like we did in the windows. So, a lot of possibilities and uh, try to play with other filters like film grain noise, you know, to, to add some weird distortions to your images which in some cases may be very interesting and save the images. I have one more time here on this street of Bordeaux scene the light rail and uh, probably it's not physical correct well I'm sure about that because uh, you would achieve this bouncing effect of a light rail only if Snoop Dogg would come with his you know low rider and uh, still Still dry, <laughs> so, so so probably that's not correct. But still, it's giving us as um, a cool maybe distraction on the image, let's say. And uh, you know, you're a CG artist, and you will not know that's not correct because you know it should be straight because the road is perfectly flat. But uh, most people will not notice, so uh, we don't need to worry about this, and uh, you know we don't need to kill ourselves for small mistakes. And it's good if you're conscious and if you know you 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 may do these mistakes it's worse when you do mistakes and you don't know about that but we all do it also so anyway we can uh, at any time tweak the settings make some framings on the image with additional elements like trees rocks sounds but we can also add few other types of framing like vignette for example or a very strong sky we can add depth of field effects inside of Photoshop using the lens filter, lens blue filter, and we can tweak the settings inside to receive a nice bokeh effect. So play play with uh, the threshold and also with the radius of blue. So it's always very exciting inside of this filter. <laughs> anyway, we have also some autumn scenes, and basically here the idea is to uh, push the yellow and red colors to the ceiling so the whole scene is very very warm and it's giving us a good feeling actually about that place and uh, then all we need to do is just to play with our brush on your tablet or in, with your mouse whatever you uh, prefer but uh, it's not always like that because in some scenes you don't need to do a lot of post work of course like in the single family house in autumn then we had almost a straight rendering from the V-Ray frame buffer saved as the final image just a bit contrast so it's up to you how much time you want to spend in 3ds max and uh, uh, from your experience what you can achieve very quickly inside of photoshop 
but in some cases it's not very quick like I said for all those layers and testing you may also spend a couple of hours so it's always it's always a struggle <laughs> where to spend more time and you know the good thing about uh, 2d work is uh, that you don't need to worry about the rendering time and you can always say I'm done at this moment and save the file so that's the good about this technique it was a great pleasure to work with you guys today inside of Photoshop and uh, I hope you have enjoyed this little making of also and I see you in our last last the tenth lecture where we will solve the unsolved cases inside of V-Ray and 3ds Max and I will try to prepare some extra lecture just for you guys to uh, have more fun with me I hope and uh, I'm Simon HC have a nice day and I'm looking for your renderings see ya guys